Hey guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I'm finally doing an overview review on Stranger Things on Netflix. So I've had a lot of people tell me I have to watch this show, and I finally found the time to watch the whole thing. It took me like me two or three days to watch it all, and uh, this will be a spoiler-filled review of what happened in the show. What did I think overall? I um, also wanted to make an announcement that our next Media Madness is actually going to be discussing this whole show and that is Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time on Comic Frontline, so be sure to check that out. Um, let's start talking about Stranger Things, so just a quick overview of what this show's about. Um, it's kind of an 80s homage. It's uh, making, not making fun, but it's it's uh, expanding upon um, those 80s tropes, horror tropes, uh, movies like Aliens, uh, E.T. Those are some, some big uh, influences for this show. And it starts out with this boy who goes missing, Will. And uh, we see a new player kind of come into town who has these abilities. Her name's Eleven. Uh, so we have, I would say, three different stories. We, we have our, the three, little, uh, three boys who are like 10 or 12 um, who their friend went missing and they want to find out what happened and they see some strange things happening um, around this subject. Uh, and they, then again, they're introduced to this character Eleven who is connected to Will being missing and, and knows more than she can really say. Uh, the other characters, we have um, Michael's sister who's Nan who's Nancy and uh, she kind of gets connected to this story too when her friend um, goes missing and actually dies because of this monster uh, so she ends up being connected and and has a little bit of a love triangle between Will's kind of weirder brother and like the cool guy Steve so that's uh, a big story here and uh, we'll see how that's connected to the whole thing and then the last story is with the the chief of police and the mother who's the worried mother and just wants to find Will and even after he's pronounced dead she knows that he's alive and we see our characters who are in these kind of separate groups come together and find out wait he is alive and we kind of know how to save him so he's in another dimension and Eleven is definitely the piece to that puzzle because she was kidnapped by these government people who uh, knows about this monster. Now I will say we never really learn about the monster. We don't really have the curtain uh, fully revealed and that's okay. We don't need those answers this season. That's something to bring um, to the table for future seasons and I see in interviews um, by the creators that they said yes we will find out more about this world. Uh, there's a lot more notes to it that we just kind of touched the surface on. On. And you can definitely tell with um, with this season that they just touched the surface. And I think that's why the season was so good, is that it's not totally focusing on let's reveal everything we know about this world in one episode and cram it all in. It, it didn't have to be that way. It left us with enough mystery where you want another season, and uh, it wraps you up enough that you are satisfied with this season to wait another year or how long we are going to get for another season. So overall, what I think of the show? Um, I think the best aspect of the show was the pacing. Now, I won't say it was the quickest show ever because it wasn't. You know, there are definitely slow moments in the show, but I really like that it was only eight episodes. It's a quick binge and what the show's about more than developing the world of Stranger Things, it's about developing these realistic characters. And that's what I liked what they did with the horror trope. Now, I feel like with horror, either it's very realistic of people dying and, and being the final girl or whatever. That's a big trope in, in horror. Or you see, you know, them become some action star by the end of the movie or show where it's very unrealistic. But here in Stranger Things, we still have a, a single mom. And by the end of of the show she's still a single mom she deals with some weird things and she goes into some weird dimensions but she's still a single mom by the end of the show nancy she's a teenage girl and she's still a teenage girl even though she knows how to shoot a gun by the end and then even the kids they they're still kids but they've gone through some stuff and even will in the end i think one of the most interesting cliffhangers is that will um he has kind of some post-traumatic stress, but because this is a horror show, you don't know if it's just his mind, is it just him, you know, thinking all these things, uh, or is it actually something physically horror, horror sci-fi thing going on with him. Uh, that's the most interesting thing, and I think that's also another interesting thing about this season, like Will's mother. 
like that story could have just taken a psychological turn saying well she's just seeing these things because she just lost her son and that's what a lot of people are saying well you're just seeing these things it's like no this is happening and another aspect I really liked about this season yes we have all three of these stories and they're kind of disconnected but they connect them well enough it's not unreasonable when they do connect and they're not like oh all like oh we're a team now let's work together by the end it's they still have their separate stories but they do connect and become stronger together um, when they do have those episodes so that's um, an aspect I really like um, for the shows, how all the characters connected in a real realistic way. Um, so that was interesting. And yeah, the character development was really well done. Eleven, obviously, we got to see her talk a little bit more, um, become more personable with, um, especially with Mike. Um, so we, that was a big part of the episode you see these kids who are best friends just playing games with each other have real life situations that are kind of tearing apart their friendship and in a way that yeah this is how 10 year old 10 year old 10 year olds would deal with that um so uh that that was a big moment i thought that they did that really well um i was really impressed with um nancy's story too i think uh you know one thing i liked about this was playing with the horror tropes which you know usually um the virgin stays alive and the girl has sex she dies and they played with that trope and they twisted it so nancy you know she could have been a total two-dimensional i'm the sister and then you die type thing but they end up saying after because she's pretty two-dimensional until she has sex and then after she realizes oh god i was a horrible friend and that you see especially with the actress i think she did a great job where in the back of her mind she's always like oh my god, I lost my friend because I did this. It was my fault this whole time, and I need to kill this monster just to kind of make it okay for myself. And, and hopefully they can explore more of that story because they, they were only able to kind of touch upon it, like, again, from the actress and how the way she, she did the scenes. But story-wise, they weren't able to touch upon the Barbara stuff as much as you want. But yeah, it was interesting that they, they kind of played with that twist and made her character stronger because of it. So I was really impressed with that arc. Even, like, Steve, who's supposed to be, like, the douche of the show. Um, he becomes likable by the end. It, it was really the character building that was so interesting about this show that you paid attention for all eight episodes. And obviously the world that they created, but it's cool that this show didn't totally rely on the world. It, it was really relying on the characters. And uh, that was definitely the most interesting part. And again, you have enough cliffhangers where you're like, yes, I want more. I want more Eleven. I want to see where the show will go. And I'm glad that from interviews, it seems like they're going to stick with these characters because it does seem like there's so much more story to tell. I don't know what mystery they'll do next, but it, it was a really fun show that played with horror horror stereotypes and um kind of brought back that paranoia of horror a uh, horror i think it's a really good time to bring that back the reason that the 80s even had all these horror movies was because of the paranoia of the 80s so it's interesting that we're kind of having that now and bringing that show back there's something in the back of my head i kept thinking about it's like why haven't we had these horror movies and now we're seeing we are getting these horror, no uh, horror movies with this paranoia um so i thought that was really interesting and we'll see where it goes but uh i liked i think the best way to say for this show is what i liked is that it was an 80s movie like you're watching an 80s movie but in better quality I mean that's that's the best way to put it and I and they did a good job with that and again making it new um, having interesting characters I, I really enjoyed it uh, I gave it four and a half stars again the beginnings a little bit on the slower side I don't know if I was as addicted in the beginning but it's worth it to build these characters and care about them and making them realistic horror characters which is a real fresh thing to have. So again, overall, I gave this four and a half stars, really enjoyed the show, and can't wait to hopefully get a next season when that is greenlit. My guess will be for next summer. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Comic You Know. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to like my Facebook page. Also, description below, there are links for my comic book, Like Father, Like Daughter. And don't forget to like the Facebook page of Like Father, Like Daughter. And I'll see you guys later.